Today I am going to show you how I created this two page spread in this little journal that I have. It's a little fishing theme for my friend Jason, Saltwater Action Gear on YouTube, and also for Captain Clueless. This is for you, Jason and Jim. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you did that. Ring my bell. Check out my channel memberships. Hi everyone. I'm going to have a play here this morning in this little journal. I've been using it for my, just to play with napkins, but I had these two pages that were just kind of wipe off pages and had some blues and greens and aqua paint on them. And I thought I would just have a play. I played with some color on this page and basically what I did, I'm going to do the same thing over here and show you, but I started with just some clear gesso on the page. My brush does have some water in it, so it's watering it down a bit. While this is wet, I'm going to just take a paintbrush and start mixing the color wash. This is Tattered Angels color wash. This is a green tea. I'm just going to kind of mix it in. Spread it out, leave some areas heavier, wipe it off, and then this color is Blue Lagoon. I'm going to mix some of that in there. And you can see it's this is the color tint, color wash is transparent, so I'm still seeing those bits of. cast off or wiped off paints. And I'm getting some interesting results right there from the color wash mixing. That didn't happen on this side. I'm going to keep that. And then just I'm going to just dab it with the end of my brush and just make some marks. I'm going to rip some of that gesso out of my brush. I'm going to drop some more green in here, here and there. And this is not a real heavyweight paper. I'm thinking it's, I don't know, maybe 90 pound. So I'm going to have to build the layers up so that I don't totally disintegrate the paper. Now this side is already darker than this side. It, the color wash dries a lot lighter than it looks when you first put it on. So keeping that in mind. But I'm going to dry this, but first I'm going to just dip my fingers in my water basin and drop some water. I did get a few little spots over there, but I'm thinking maybe I'll get more on this side where it's heavier. I don't know. I'm just going to let it sit, the water sit on there for a minute <clears throat> and react before I hit it with the heat tool and dry it. But I have, where is it? A piece of Stamperia rice paper that I scanned and then printed on that typing bond that I found. It's a really old, old tablet of typing bond that's kind of translucent. You can see through it a little bit. So I just tore some pieces. I have those set to the side, kind of, and I took a picture of how I had them down. And I'm going to add those to this. I'm going to dry this first and I'll be back. Okay, everything is dry. You can see each page turned out 
pretty different even though I kind of did the same thing. I'm going to use this rut this cling stamp. It just looks like bubbles just to get some added texture in the background and I'm going to use archival ink in gardenia garden patina or gardenia patina. <laughs> no, it's garden patina. of this is going to end up even showing. That's interesting. I think it's lifting and putting an impression at the same time. Because it's certainly not the turquoise color that this ink is. Yeah, it's it's kind of picking up and mixing with the color wash, which is kind of cool. I'm using the archival link because, and it just went right in my paint, um, because it's permanent, kind of, but the color wash is not. I thought mixing it maybe with the gesso, yeah I like that in the background though, I thought mixing it with the gesso might prevent it from lifting as much, but this ink it's here I'll show you closer here and here see how blue it is so the ink even though it's this color is mixing with that color wash and changing the color and see how dark it is on the stamp it's blue. I like it though. Just unexpected. I should write that down for further reference. Future reference. Because I'll forget. But I like the way it mixes and changes it. It is adding a lot of cool texture into this background though. And I don't know if you watched my last video. I have new video editing software. I really kind of had a hard time with it. There were a couple of really bad spots in that video where I sped up what I was doing, but it sped up the music too, even though the music was on a separate editing track so I'm not sure how that happened so that was a fun surprise when I played it back and by that time I was so tired of messing with the new software that I just left it in <laughs> it was just a short section but it was jarring Okay, enough of that. So that was a fun thing to learn. But I like so I'm just gonna hit it really quickly with the heat tool and I might spray it with a fixative too, just so that I don't get any more surprises when I start using the matte medium to glue the papers in. So I'm gonna do that. See you on the other side. I went ahead and glued these papers down with matte medium and you can tell but this side these papers I forgot to spray with spray fixative I did spray the background you can see the color is much better here where I did spray it because the ink lifted the inkjet ink lifted a bit when I put those down so I have more vibrant colors on my fish on this side but what I want to try and this is all totally experiment because I don't know what's going to work and what isn't I have some glazing liquid and some cobalt turquoise I believe it is 
acrylic paint to make just a transparent layer of paint and I'm just going to go around my fish and we'll still be able to see the details of the fish but I just want to try and push the rest of the paper back a little bit kind of blend it into the background a little more And it doesn't have to be real even coverage. I'm totally fine with some spots being a little darker than others. It just kind of lends itself more to the idea that this is all underwater. Really lost the pattern on that paper. I'm just going to go ahead and do this around all these fish and over these papers. And I'll be back when it's done and dry. While I was gone, I took cobalt turquoise and um, glazing liquid and went over most of the papers all the way around all the paper pieces and then I took what color did I use hang on I used where is it uh, blue gray and did the same thing but just under the fish a bit to just give kind of a shadow and I put a lot of that color down when it mixed with the turquoise I got more of a lavender color than a blue color which I wasn't crazy about but it is what it is so I did that and I dried it and then I have some of that cheesecloth that I just um, dyed with watered down acrylic paint I just have a bunch of this in my stash so I just tore some pieces I have a piece down here and I'm taking heavy gel matte medium mixing it with some of the paint colors so that I don't have a whole lot of white and I'm just putting it down with that And I can add more and it will kind of thin down the color a little bit or make it less, make it lighter. <laughs> I can't talk today. Uh, this quarantine business is getting to me, I think. So in some places I just want the color of this cheesecloth to stay the color it is and then in other places I'm adding a little bit of paint just to give it a little variation and I can dry brush over the top of this too like this I'll just pick up a little bit of that turquoise in my brush and I can just kind of go over little spots here and there and let it pick up some of the turquoise color and I gotta say this isn't at all what I envisioned when I started. I really thought that this typing bond paper, since I could see through it, I thought it would get more transparent when I glued it down with the matte medium, but it really didn't. So all that pretty background kind of just disappeared, which is okay, because now I know. And I might, I have some Titan buff acrylic on my mat over here. I'm going to put some in my brush with some of that matte medium and just kind of hit 
some high spots on this cheesecloth just to kind of give the appearance like the light is shining into the water and kind of glistening off the fabric a little bit. Not a lot, just touches here and there. Okay, see like right there, little touches of that off-white color. And I think I may pick up some glazing liquid and some of that Titan Buff and try and give a little bit of a highlight along the top of some of these fish too. If I don't like it, I can always wipe it off. I have it really diluted out. But there would be light coming from the top. I'm not doing a lot, just a little bit. Just to give the illusion that there's sunlight coming in from above. Okay, everything is dry. I have some green gold high flow acrylic and a little piece of a sea sponge that I tore off and I'm just dipping that in the paint and I'm just going to use it kind of like a stamp and see if I can get some kind of seaweedy looking plant life in here. It's just enough. I wasn't sure how that was going to work, but I like it. Now let's give that a dry real quick. It dries real fast. Okay. I will apologize in advance. If there's any major glitches in this video when it comes out of editing because, like I said, I'm learning some new editing software and just kind of auditioning it. It's going to have the power director or whatever it's called watermark on the video, which I'm not crazy about, but I'm not going to buy it until I decide if I really like it enough to pay for it. So, um... I did splatter some of the color wash tint, the Blue Lagoon, just a light spattering on this. I'm feeling like the fish maybe need to stand out a little bit more. I'm also not crazy about the fact that I have both of these same fish kind of going in the same direction, but maybe they're part of a family and they're sticking together. So. I didn't realize that I had done that until after it was glued down. So I kind of did this for my friend Swag, Jason, he's saltwater action gear. If you like the beach and beach craft, uh, watercraft videos, jet skis and fishing and beach life, he's in Charleston. 
and he has a really great live stream every Thursday night at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. If you want to jump in there, it's always a lot of fun, just storytelling, and he does, he has a huge line of merchandise, shirts and hats and that kind of apparel, um, and he gives stuff away during every live stream. He has a dartboard, and if your number hits on the dartboard, you either you get your channel shouted out if you are a creator, or you get a chance to win some some good merchandise. So anyways, this is for Swag. Jason, this is for you. You too, Jim. Captain Clueless, he's in, in the live streams often too, and does his own live streams if you're a fishing buff. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Experiment in your studio. Push your art supplies to do things that you don't know whether they're going to do it or not. If it's going to work or not. Because, you know, at the end of the day, it's just a piece of paper and some paint. And if you learn something, even if you don't like the end result, you've learned something along the way. And that's, that's worth a lot. Because then you can take that knowledge going forward. And in the meantime, go make some art. Bye.